This is AC35 Daily Update. Stronger winds are made for a rough and tough Tuesday in Bermuda at the Louis Vuitton Challengers playoffs. The Kiwis win one and a crash one to go 3-1 on Great Britain. In the other semi, Japan equals that score with a 2-0 on Sweden. And now from the 35th America's Cup, here is Nautical Channel Sports correspondent Nick Douglas with the analysis and the post-race comments. Hi Nautical Channel Sports fans, this is Nick Douglas, the Sailor Girl in Bermuda after an exceptionally eventful day out on the race course. The second day of racing for the Louis Vuitton America's Cup Challenger playoff semi-finals was incredible. Before racing even started, Emirates Team New Zealand had already headed back to the shore to try and repair damage to their wing. What resulted was them completely craning their boat out and changing to their spare wing before heading back out to the race course. Meanwhile, we had the third race of the semi-finals between Artemis Racing and SoftBank Team Japan underway under a small delay, given that conditions were gusting up to 26 knots, but with an average of 22 to 24 knots, with that upper range being 26 knots just incredible racing with white water everywhere and in that first race between SoftBank and Artemis effectively pieces of the boat peeling off in all different directions. Then on to the second race effectively Emirates Team New Zealand were late for the start as they sailed straight out from the harbour and straight into the sequence. They managed to enter on time and cross the line and then come from behind to defeat Land Rover BAR and take a win in what Pete Burling said was a win for their shore crew. Following on from Emirates Team New Zealand's near impossible win, SoftBank Team Japan and Artemis Racing were up on the starting block again for their fourth semi-final match. SoftBank Team Japan were quick off the blocks and continued to show fine form that we've come to expect of them in heavy weather. Just really knitting as a team. I spoke to Dean Barker about just how much the SoftBank Team Japan camp may have learned from their what seemed to be a loss in the qualifying series. Well, yesterday I think you showed everybody that you were a real player in this game and today to hold it together in all but survival conditions. Yeah, well, I think, um, you know, we, we sit there knowing right now we could be on four if, uh, you know, things had gone a little bit differently yesterday. But it's um, a huge amount of confidence for our guys. And, uh, and the qualifiers weren't that sort of, I guess, uh, you know, weren't that rewarding for us in a number of ways. But the lessons we learned there, are, I think, have made us much stronger now. And I think we can only get better from here. Artemis Racing found it difficult to even bear away at the first reaching mark and from there they gained a penalty which went on to be a double penalty and there was quite a bit of aggression on board as we watched the boat struggle to slow down in the conditions doing you know almost 40 knots on the run and just white water going everywhere. Those goggles that we've come to expect of, uh, of Nathan Outeridge, the skipper of Artemis Racing, I had to ask him about where they had gone to, so uh, in, in my little chat with them after racing. It got quite cloudy and dark, so I had to, to peel them off for the second race, but I uh, kind of wish I had them on because there was plenty of white water. But struggling with the confidence in the boat and, um, you know, we had a, a bit of a crash in the lead up to that race and spent a good period of time just trying to, you know, Put the boat back together again. It was mostly cosmetic stuff, but um, you know, as the racing went on, there was more bits and pieces of fairings sort of falling off, and I think that was the same happening on everyone else. But um, you know, these boats are incredibly fragile, and you know, it just made it made our life a bit more difficult than we needed it. We're happy with how the boat's going in general. Today was obviously a tough day, and um, we'll review what happened today and. Uh, you know, make sure we're better prepared for stronger winds. Into the final race of the day and Land Rover BAR's Ben Ainsley had no choice but to get a little bit more aggressive in the start sequence, holding Emirates Team New Zealand up until it was all but go time. Land Rover BAR were off to a quick start, gaining the lead that we have come to expect them needing to get that advantage on Emirates Team New Zealand, who seem to be almost flawless even in those windy conditions, pulling off tacks and jibes on their foils that no other team seemed to be able to do. 
What eventuated as Emirates Team New Zealand bore away during that start sequence was a massive pitch pole and then everybody scrambling to see the heads on board and check that everybody was safe. We spoke to Pete Burling just moments ago in this very room about how it felt to have what seemed to be one of the toughest days at the office a team could have, from changing out their wing to then an exceptionally extreme capsize. It was definitely you know, a massive effort by the shore crew to, to get the boat back out there for that first race. Um, it was something that you know, I think everyone pulled together really strong to, to make that happen. You know, everyone was out in the forecourt working, working to try and get us back out there and I think we only made it with a couple of minutes to spare. So. Boats are definitely on the limit in those kind of conditions and yeah. you're definitely trying to play it safe but obviously we got a little wrong in that one so no, it's a um, you know, really tough, tough break but uh, no, we're pretty resilient as a team and I think the guys will show that over the next day or so. I think it's the first time someone's really pitched bold one of these boats and I'm not really, we're just kind of waiting up there um, you know, looking around checking everyone was safe. Obviously I was really glad I could see Glenn and Simon in the cockpit in front of me and you know, looked around the side, you can see uh, Andy, Andy, Josh and Blair out the back. So, no, I think that's definitely the priority in those situations is you know, making sure everyone's safe and well and you know, everything else can be repaired. Conditions are looking even scarier out on the Great Sound here in Bermuda. So it is not expected that racing will take place, but it is yet to be officially postponed. We will have to wait and see. Artemis Racing now have to make a move on SoftBank Team Japan as SoftBank Team Japan only needs to win two more matches to move through to the Louis Vuitton America's Cup Challenger Playoff Final. Just the same way that Emirates Team New Zealand only need to win two more over Land Rover BAR. It's a big ask for some of these teams here in Bermuda, especially now for Emirates Team New Zealand. Even though they only have two more wins, will they be able to get their boat together in time to be out on the race course? My name's Nick Douglas, known as the Sailor Girl, and I'm here in Bermuda for the Nautical Channel, and we'll be keeping you posted on what is turning out to be an extreme and amazing regatta. Stay tuned to Nautical Channel for the next edition of AC35 Daily Update with Sailor Girl adventurer Nick Douglas from Bermuda. NC Sports, plunge into the action.